American community committed to preserving the vast customs of a vibrant cultural heritage. Welcome to Dersh in America, folks. We come to you from Washington, D.C. My name is Ramesh Bhutani. And I'm Asta Verma. Folks, recession has been hard on all of us, but it has hurt states much more. Some of these states, how do they get in trouble? You have to ask yourself. Number one cause is the pension. You have employees, you hire them today, but you are collecting liabilities for them every year into the future. Now, that really should not have been the case. Uh, you know, balanced budget is a charter almost in every state, but they don't do that. Why? Because politicians need unions, need employees to go out there and root for them and get them elected. In return, they promise these salaries not only while they're working, but these bigger pensions after they're finished working. So many of them really are in huge trouble. For instance, the state of Illinois is number one. They are borrowing money to pay to their uh, employees. California, they started giving IOUs to the contractors. You know, we'll pay you sometime in the future. But to their employees, they threaten them, we'll pay you minimum wage, because that was the only loophole that was open to the governor. Well, a couple of things. One, the state of California clearly is a huge economy. It represents disproportionately just a very large amount of the U.S. economy. Texas uh, will tell you they're number one, but well, that's okay. Texas has the oil industry, but yeah. I think second to Texas or second to that state, California comes in as the highest population as well as uh, some of the highest per capita income and so forth. So. Mm -hmm. You're looking at uh, a very large amount of money that uh, is generated out of that one state. Of course, they are in crisis mode. But then you have to realize they are mismanaged fundamentally. Uh, many of you have been watching the story about this small town in California, Bell County, yes. uh, where their <laughs> officials were getting paid some absurd salaries. $1.6 million for the mayor. It's ridiculous because the town is only 40,000 people big. That's so you right. can imagine that those salaries are just disproportionate. So I think, you know, with states, you're right. First of all, they're different from the federal government because they are required to balance their budgets. That's uh, the charter of the states. The federal government is not required to balance its budget, which is why we always talk about our deepening uh, crisis as far as yeah. our debt. Now, that said, I think states can do a lot to do an internal revision of their systems. Clearly, California was due for one. I mean, this story broke, and it made people angry. Just the it, way did. It, it did. It did. Made People but angry. you know, there are states that are doing good. For instance, state of New Jersey, the employees have to pay some money towards the health cost. The state is not going to take it all. So there are changes that are being made. For instance, uh, this is not a state, but D.C. is a individual uh, well, again. entity, and, and <laughs> there are structural imbalances because they can't tax anybody. The problem with D.C. is they shoulder an unfair burden for the federal government in that it's housed here locally yeah. within our, our uh, premises. So therefore, a lot of the D.C. police force uh, is required to help uh, with federal events. For example, things that are taking place within the city center. And as you said, you know, we do tax D.C. residents. In fact, D.C. is the only part of the United States where you have taxation without representation core tenant of the United States because we do not still have a voting member in Congress. That's right, but uh, D.C. has another problem. Everybody comes to D.C. to do the business, but then they go pay taxes in their own states. That's the wrong portion of it. And that's why uh, D.C. is fighting. D.C. is really fighting to get a little more dollars from them. But in the meantime, they're not going to tell the federal government to go away. No, 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 please stay here. You know, we still well, they need, need you. They need the no, you don't pay funds. taxes, but we still need you. you know. Well, interesting phenomena that is happening on the political front, probably because of these types of issues that are happening uh, on the state's fronts, is, you know, we talk about the Tea Party movement. And we've always talked about, well, we're a two-party system in the United States. We have Democrats, we have Republicans. And really, no third party has really emerged concretely. And there's a lot of buzz about the Tea Party coming in and being a strong force or perhaps a strong influencer in the 2012 elections. Well, they don't have an outstanding national candidate. This we know. Even though Sarah Palin is out, she talks a lot uh, in the Tea Party um, events. 
You can say there, you there's can a say, Republican wing, though. There's a Republican wing. I mean, we talked about this before. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, people who are in that independent bracket that are embracing the Tea Party because, yeah. in some ways, the fiscal side of the Tea Party, the responsibility of uh, maintaining our debt, is, uh, is, is hitting chords with that independent sector. But the point I was going to make is those Tea Party candidates are finding success at the state level. Even if they never become a national force in the 2012 election, they might influence enough local elections that come um, time for these elections to take place in Congress. We could see a lot of shifts, and the I, Democrats could lose a lot of seats. I predict one thing. The grizzly mamas are going to own some of these states. I want to tell you, women will at least increase their membership in that club by 25%. A large chunk of the participation in the Tea Party movement comes from women. That's right. A few days ago, I read in the Washington Post, folks, where it shows that there are agents here in the United States that invite the pregnant woman from China and get their kids the ultimate luxury item, which is United States citizenship. That's as old as time. I mean, we talk about, you know, the problem and challenges of immigration, and that's part of the problem is when you have young families and they come and they have their babies here, those babies are U.S. citizens, but the parents may not be, and now what do you do? Do you allow the parents uh, to stay because the child has to have parents? No, no, no. They have to go back, and they're willing to go back because most of them are doctors, lawyers, business people, I mean, really rich people that come in for that ultimate luxury to have a child with a U.S. citizenship only because when they grow older in China, 